All right, let's try to make a church controller. I've already started one be before this episode, so I'm going to go into the church's controller, and you can see it it supports the index action, which lists all the churches that we have, and the show action, which lists a specific church. There's nothing new or interesting about that from the user. So I'm not going to go into that and just have those available. Let's create now our new and corresponding create method. Oh, let's even spell that correctly. Um, and I'm just going to use as a pattern the users controller that we have and you can see right here we've got our, our new and create methods there so what we're going to do is we know for new we're just going to create some church object and that's going to be good and for the creation we have to do a little bit more right because of the new we're just making some blank object that we can create a form to, to fill out whereas with the church we're receiving the data from that filled out form. So we're going to say that the church is it created from the parameters that we receive. And if that church um, can be saved, then we can go ahead and generate some flashes, messages that can say um, something like church created and we're going to do our post redirect get pattern so we'll um, now display the church that we just created otherwise if we're not able to save the church then we need to create a flash message on the current page and do something like unable to create church so that the user can try to look at the errors and figure out what it is. And so then we say to go back to the, the new display. Now, the one thing that we have going for us differently with a church that we didn't have with the users is that a church has a manager, uh, an owner, whatever we want to call that. And we need to set that as well because we're going to have uh, tests that make sure that only that person is allowed to, to modify the church. And so when we first create the church, what we're going to do is we're not going to receive that from our parameters because we don't want to let anyone assign a church to anyone else uh, that can cause security problems. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to infer it from who's already logged in. And so we can just access the current user method that we've built up previously and just um, oh, we need to make sure that we set that to that church's user. So now we, we set the parameters from the parameters and, that are passed in but we set this additional attribute, the user attribute, and we could do something like this, but that's not considered a good form. Instead, what we do is we take the object and we assign it to the object, and Rails is smart enough to say, oh, the, the current user has a specific ID, and so we'll set the user ID on the save here. So it knows the IDs and sets the right things for us. So, so we can think in terms of objects, and not in terms of, say, um, a particular ID, foreign key, primary key, and so forth. We, we can kind of not have to think about that as much as possible. And then the other thing that we want to do here is create our church params method. So if we go in here and we look at our, our user params method, that's going to be really helpful to us because we can use that as a template. And instead of getting a user, we're of course getting a church. And now in uh, the different methods, 
that we're going to support here are name, the church's website, the church's description, and the church's picture. I can spell that right. And those are the values that we want to be able to receive from our church. And that should allow us to get a good start on, on the church. Let's go ahead and uh, <coughs> create the, the views then for this form so that we can try to fill it out. So if we edit our app views churches, we know that we're going to have a new because it matches the name of our action there. And again, we're, we'll use as a template our users. And it looks like this. We render the errors. So if we have any validation errors, they show up. Um, and then we're going to create a form to fill out that. But it's not a user. It's a church. So we can change that. And then we can do something like create new church. And uh, we want to use the same partial for our errors. But for the fields, we're going to have a special fields for our church that are different from our users. So let's create that partial as well. So at views churches. And we're going to call it fields.html.erb. And again, we can just use our users template to give a start um, here. Instead of being uh, our name, what we're going to do is use the church name instead. And so we're going to change that label to say church name. And of course, email doesn't make sense. So we're going to say uh, website and website. Uh, we can uh, make this be a description for the page. And this is no longer a password field. This is just a, a text area. And we'll make that a description. And then uh, f finally here, we can make this our um, picture. And for right now, this should be something that uploads a picture. But I'm going to just, uh, for not focusing on that right now, just to say that we're going to upload uh, a text field that represents the, the picture. And we can fix that up uh, in, in a later video. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and run our Rails server. And now that that's running, we can go ahead and <coughs> open up our web browser. So what we want to do is we've got our view of churches. We want to create a new church. So we'll go to our URL slash churches slash new. And we see that we've got a missing partial churches slash errors. Well, we got this from the users error. What's going on? The answer to that, of course, if we go back to our um, views, churches, and this is, um, no, sorry, this is churches, uh, is that we copied this from users and errors is in the users directory. Let's look at, I'm going to stop the server here. And if I do an ls and at views users, we have right here, the partial is in errors. And if we look here, it's looking not in users, but it's looking in churches because that's the directory of our view that we're, we're trying to do now. So what we want to do is to move this error file because we want to share it between our, our users and our churches and all other future views that we create and, and make it more useful. So what we're going to do first is we're going to, whoops, let 
make a new directory app views shared because the that's going to be a directory that's shared between all of our views and then what we're going to do is we're going to move the errors partial into that directory and so now we can say shared errors and now notice that like before we don't need to put the underscore in here even though the name of our partial is shared slash errors uh, if we look at our directory it's shared slash errors we don't have to put that underscore in there because rails knows to look for that underscore because it is a partial so now that we've done that we can go ahead and reload this and of course we need to start up our rails server and once that gets started we can reload our page and now it's complaining about something else inside of our errors partial and it says undefined method errors well, what oh look at this it's trying to use at user so if we go ahead and edit now our partial we d we right now had it hard coded to to deal with the user object but we want to generalize it to to work for for any object so what we would like is instead of at user what we would like to do is be able to say that for whatever object the error is associated with we would like to to be able to work with it and and generalize it in in this way and this is going to allow us to be able to to use this then but the, the problem is where is it, it going to get that message uh, right. if we go back here and we we now work on it it's still going to complain it doesn't know what that object is we we need to tell it which object we're we're trying to to find our errors from and so the way that we're we're going to do that is that we're um, going to go back into our church's um, new method and we want to be able to say that the object that we're going to want to be using is our our church object so what we want to say is anytime you see the word object use this variable right here and so if we do that and go back here now it's still complaining and it turns out there's I think two methods that we can do to fix it and the easiest one is just to delete that that partial keyword right there and I believe that if we do that now uh, everything is better there until we get down to uh, syntax error um, in our yes okay so if we look up here it's talking about in our fields partial and so if we go into there we see that here at line one we accidentally forgot that terminator so now if we deal with that and reload it we now have a, a website that we can fill out with our church and in the next set of videos what we're going to do is see how we can make this include our service um, nested attributes